That's not what we do. I'm looking for it. We do. But it just went away there. So, fair enough. To a call, you don't have to have the CEO. So, if any of you are, any of you are fired up. Okay, I want to call the meeting to order, please. September 20th meeting of the Lee New Hampshire Board of Selectmen. We will we will start the meeting uh, with public comment. If anybody has a comment they'd like to make, they can raise their hand. I'll recognize you. you come to the podium, state your name, and address me. Have three or four minutes to uh, place your comment. Not a lot of public people here today. So we'll just move down the uh, move down the agenda to Dr. James Morse, Oyster River Superintendent. How are you, sir? Very good. So thank you as always and give me a little bit of time. I will try to keep it um, brief and we'll try to keep Scott away from the napkins where he starts playing around with the tax impacts and all of that because we're not even going to talk about money tonight. Um, first of all, I do want to say some kind things about the, the fire department and the police department and their support of the, our master school. Um, they have been incredibly attentive to the school as we opened up. Um, I think probably every officer was on site and uh, the fire department was there and it's always, uh, you know, it's one of those things you look forward to at the opening of school. We see the police and fire at, at the Massway School, and uh, it's pretty impressive, so I want to thank them publicly. And then at just tonight, I wanted to give you just a few updates. Um, obviously, the, the big news in the district is the construction of the new middle school, and um, one of the things that we were trying to achieve with the, with the new school was net zero, and what that means is the school will produce about about the same amount of power as it uses. So the roof has solar panels and we're building a solar canopy over the parking lot and it has um, just a lot of super cool energy features in, in, embedded. The thing that actually happened though is we ended up with net positive, which means that the building will produce more power than it uses. In the, for, the, for the first seven years, um, our taxpayers don't benefit because we are doing it through a lease arrangement and an investment arrangement. But in the seventh year, the school district will buy out that arrangement. The net result will be that the taxpayers in our district over the next 20 years will save $2 million in um, energy use, which is a direct impact, obviously, to our taxpayers. So the investment in the school is actually going to be an incredible payback, not just for the students, but for the, for the towns that supported it. So um, it's about 76% complete, and our children will move from the old school to the new school in February, during February break. And then we'll tear down the old school and build the field area. So by the time we open again in August, the entire project will be done. So. Um, we're pretty excited by that, and I just stopped there. I know Scott was heavily involved in being a participant on the um, planning uh, committee and, and uh, has taken a very personal interest in it, and I know you guys have stopped by and seen the project go up. Can I answer any questions for the three of you around the middle school? No, I'm just very, I mean, to walk through that school and go up the fourth flights also. Uh, is really, really very interesting. It's, it's amazing, really, especially when you look at uh, the energy recovery system, the piping, uh, the, the plumbing. It's, it's just kind it's of amazing. Of it's, really, it's really something yeah. to see. Um, so everybody who's come through, and we've had many, many visitors now, um, have been impressed. We've had architect groups come through. We've had superintendent groups come through. Um, obviously, we've had community groups come through, and everybody was impressed with how the build, building was designed and, and the geothermal um, heating cooling system. And so, I'm really excited about the kids being able to be shipping over there mid-year, and excited about seeing the project come to a conclusion in, in August. So, the next thing I just wanted to touch base with you: these uh, enrollment numbers that I share with you are, you know, not. Um, official yet, but um, one of the great concerns we had over the course of last year and this summer was uh, once we opened school for children again, would they return? 
and indeed they did. So um, right now the Massway School is at 327. This would be as the opening of school. I shouldn't say right now. On October 1st, the official numbers will come out. Uh, Massway is at 327 students. Moharamid is at 287 students. The middle school is at 628 students, and the high school is at 870 students. The surprise this year as we opened was the high school. We ended up with about 30 more children than we anticipated. None of our projections would have counted for those 30 um, youngsters. They came from Singapore, they came from Ottawa, they came from Florida, they came from the Midwest. It was really kind of an interesting dynamic. And then the other thing that was interesting about it is the number of children who moved in who were seniors, which is really unusual. You don't normally see families move in the, in the child's senior year. So there were a number of them that were seniors. So I'm pretty pleased with the number of uh, students. It's almost identical to last um, October 1st right now. Uh, when we opened it was 2112, and last year at this time uh, was 2111. So um, the children are returning en masse. Uh, the other piece of information I wanted to share with you unless you had any questions on enrollment. Did you have any questions on enrollment? Yes. Um, is just the district's mitigation plan as it relates to COVID. So tomorrow, um, we actually will have, we'll begin our participation in the SAS program. And we um, pitched horses to UNH. And we are actually um, testing any child on a weekly basis that the parents want us to test. So we'll um, have a vehicle here at Massway. Stewart Ambulance is, is actually the partner with UNH. So on Wednesday, there'll be an ambulance here at school. And any parent who wants their child tested can have their child tested. Uh, tomorrow's at the middle school in Massway. Wednesday's Massway in the high school. So I'm super pleased by that because it's going to be a great anxiety reliever for parents. Um, as part of our uh, mitigation plan this year, starting next Monday, we'll also be testing adults. So if an adult is not feeling good in the school system and they feel like they're under the weather, we can give them a COVID plan, um, a COVID test right on, on site. So that will be new to our mitigation plan. And in terms of the district, we are all masked up, little ones to big ones, and our students are doing great with it. Our adults are masked up as well. So regardless of whether vaccinated or unvaccinated is immaterial, everybody's wearing a mask, and it's going extremely well. Um, we're still doing three-foot distancing in the classrooms, six-foot in the cafeteria. Makes it a struggle here, of course, in the elementary school because we just don't have that kind of space but we're making the space in the gym. So the gym pro the PE program is impacted by the mitigation plan. So it's a pretty comprehensive and multi-layered plan uh, that we're very proud of. And uh, the parents this year have been uh, far more cooperative. <laughs> we have the kids in school and, um, and the, the wearing the mask is a small price to keep everybody in school. So. It's been um, a, a good opening to the school year. Staffing-wise, we're struggling. I was struggling with bus drivers. Um, we normally have 31 bus routes throughout the district. Right now, we're doing the district with 21. And if you're a parent, you probably have realized that we've separated the bus routes for the first time. So what we normally do is what we call a K-12 through run. And this year, it's a very distinct, we're doing a five through 12 run early, followed by a K through four run for both of the elementary schools. Same thing in the afternoon. It lengthens the day, but it does allow us to pick up the kids and, and get them home. The price we're paying is our, our lesser ability to do field trips and sports trips and those kinds of things. So the priority was to get the kids to and from school, pick them up, bring them home. And then as we increase in drivers, we'll do more of the traditional um, field trips and, and uh, sports trips. So right now, in case anybody's listening, uh, or if anybody knows anybody, we're paying $24 an hour to drive our buses. And that comes with a health plan. So if you know anybody 
part-time, we'll take part-time as well as full-time because we can use part-time people too um, who's interested in a bus driving job. Uh, now's, the, need, the need is now. Um, the other area that we're struggling with employees making sure that we have what we need is in the para area, our para educators, our support teachers, if you will. And um, we're down 10 there, and that makes it hard for us to deliver all the programming that we're required to deliver, in particular in the special education area. So again, if you know of anyone who's looking for a job in the school system, please let them know um, both drivers and um, paras are, uh, we, we, have, we have a real need there. Um, that would probably be what I wanted to share tonight, and I'd be more than glad to answer any of your questions. Dr. Morris, if I have somebody who's interested in being a bus driver and I don't have a CDLB, it's my understanding also that you'll help them get, attain that certification? Absolutely. We do all the training. It's about a two-month process. It's kind of aggravating, but it's, it's a federal government uh, guideline that we're meeting, but we do all of our own training. Okay. Just so if somebody is interested but they don't have that, they can get it through you guys. Absolutely. I think there's a physical involved in that, too, is it not, for a CDL? Yeah, you have to testing and stuff like that. No, I just wanted to just... Right, Dr. Morris? Yeah. A, you get, can get called for testing. For uh, right? Any time, yeah. It's a random testing process. So, you know, they have all the names and they just pull them out randomly and you have to show and do your test and then come back to work, hopefully, meaning that they were negative. Anybody? Sure. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank, you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So you'll be back later to talk numbers? Yes. That's the only answer I'm interested to. I know, but I'm going to take your napkins away. So. <laughs> right. We can write on our hand too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can tell you right now that um, based on the information I have, we're around, um, when we talked last spring, we were at about $2. It's down to about $1.60. And so, as soon as we get the um, appraised value of the town, it should push it down um, okay. a little further. So, okay. so we're we're heading in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. Because we just did our reevaluation, and we're at about seven thirty-nine with utilities, seven hundred thirty-nine million. Yeah, so it went up significantly. It's like fifty-six percent. Yeah, it went up. So holy moly! Well. Yeah. We also have some buildings that are in definite need of, of love and attention, so we're hoping to make sure we have some funds. Yeah, I that. mean, and of course the real estate market is through the roof right now, and yeah. it's driving exactly. values up big time, you know. Um, makes it hard for families to move into the district. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. All right. Thank, well, thank you. I'll, um, I'll, I'll make sure you guys get a memo as soon as I have those, uh, I have the uh, tax rate. I'll get it right to you, so you know, you'll have it right away. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Move on. Scott Nemet, Fire Chief. Good evening. Mm -hmm. I have quite a few things tonight. I'm sorry about that, but just the way it worked out. Um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is I know that there's ARPA funding to used towards projects. So one of the projects that I've wanted to do for a long time is a vehicle exhaust removal system. Um, it's something that we've looked into in the past. It's about $70,000 to do the full system. Um, what it is, it's an outdoor fan blower system. And they run tubes off of that. We put it all up into the ceiling. It has a drop down tube that we plug right into our exhaust pipe. So whenever we start the trucks, which is the worst time for the emissions out of the truck, it goes right through the tube, out of the building, and away from everything. Um, currently, some of the trucks, when we start them on, you know, it's shooting smoke out into the bays. It gets into our gear, it gets into the, some of the equipment. So I just like to make the area safer for the firefighters. Um, you know, cancer is definitely a concern in the fire service. And when they built the building, I think they looked at it, but it was too much money. So what we do have is a fan on the far end of the building with a CO meter. Um, in my 17 years here, I've never seen the meter actually turn on the fan um, due to the smoke. 
most of the time we have it running all the time just to get the airflow through the building and such. Um, you know, on the hot days, there's not an AC out in that, and it gets pretty, um, pretty hot out there. So we'll usually have it running. But that's just something I know that the board's been talking about the funding and ways to spend it, and I just wanted to bring it to the board um, to see if that's something that I could look into further or not. I'd say look into it. I think it should be added to the financial planning tool thing and be considered with everything else that we yeah, have. I agree. So, yeah. So if you can get some some quotes um, in terms of how much that would cost, I'm not sure if the seventy-five thousand is the Scott Nye quote or if that's you know you've got hard numbers from somebody for that system. Well, we, just because of the cost, I think we have to do a RFP for this. So I can work with Denise and we can put this out to bid. Okay. All right. Let's see what we can get from. I just want to consider with everything else that we've got too. Yep. So. Yeah. Well, we also have we also have another system that we've talked about off and on, and that's a, a fire suppression system. So, are you also going to be looking into that around the same time? I haven't right now, um, just because of the the potential cost of everything. Um, and then for our building, we don't have a water source, so we'd have to do a cistern. It's something that I could definitely could look into. I know a previous chief did look into it. So I'd have to do some digging in my paperwork and see what we have on file that would give me a better head start. Um, and maybe it's not something that we have to do a full bid and go through the building again with everybody. I might have some of that information in my office currently, so I can definitely look at that. Well, for the open bay, for the open bay area, I would appreciate it if you also look into a phone system, which yep. is which is really a much better fire suppression system than the water systems. I can look into it definitely. Um, I have some concerns, but I'm open to look at them. Okay. okay. So. Alrighty, anybody else? Just the, um, the fan, you said it's dropped off. Isn't that way up high? So the carbon dioxide levitates are pretty high levels, actually, to get off. Do we have a way to find out what it is down where you guys are? I mean, I could run some tests. We do have a lot of meters. Yeah. Um, they give us real-time information, so we could start the trucks up and have meters in different areas and see what levels we have. Yeah. The fan currently is probably seven feet off the ground. Okay, so it's not. Okay, I was thinking it was a big one there. No. Okay. Um, moving on. So the next one, I have a couple things on this one. Um, some of it is just housekeeping. Uh, I'm asking the board to see if we can move our full-time lieutenant wage into the full-time firefighter wage line. Um, currently, we don't have any full-time lieutenants. The money's there. It's kind of housekeeping just to put um, go with the full-time firefighters. The next one is to do Potentially, I mean, not potentially, I'd like to move everybody to 24 hour shifts, and we've discussed this before. By doing that, there's going to be no more nighttime shift incentive. So I like to do the same with that, um, combining the nighttime shift incentive line into the part time firefighter wage line, um, and just moving the money towards that. So the whole goal for me has always been to have 24 7 coverage, staff coverage here. The cuts down our response time. Um, it helps me with scheduling. The on-call firefighters are great, and I love them, and we definitely need them, but it's definitely hard right now with everybody's work schedule, family schedule, to really know who we're going to have around. Um, by switching to the 24s, you know, that's been some of the concerns with some of the members that have left and gone to other departments. They left because of that 24-hour schedule. Um, so to move the 24-hour schedule, and looking at the nighttime incentive, recently we're not getting the coverage anymore. We've had a couple of people move out of town. They're still part of the department, and they've just been doing some part-time shifts for us on the weekends. Um, so I'd like to take the nighttime shift incentive and instead use that towards the part-time firefighters covering it. So it would be one full-time firefighter working with one part-time firefighter seven days a week. Um, to do this, some of the concerns I had was the personnel policy. The personnel policy is set up so it's for an employee doing 40 hours a week, working eight hour shifts. Um, there's some language in there that I wanted to look at. Um, and also the bigger concern is FLSA. Um, there's a 7K exemption when it comes to firefighters. 
when it really <coughs> talks about the overtime and at what what point do we have to pay firefighters for overtime? Um, I haven't looked too much into the FL, FLSA because we're growing as an apartment. Um, and I, it really hasn't hit until now with the way we're going to do things. So I did a ton of research. I reached out to the um, town lawyer. I've been working with him for two months now on revising this personnel policy. And the big issue was the, the overtime. So. What we came up with is we like to change the work period to seven days and then the full-time firefighters get overtime after 48 hours. FLSA says that we can have them work up to 53 hours before overtime. Um, I'm trying to kind of keep it in what they have now for overtime and not just go to and be like, you're going to work more hours and we'll figure out the overtime later. So I'm trying to work out that. Um, the work period can be different from the shift schedule. The shift schedule would be an eight-week cycle um, rotating through. So if on week one they start on Monday, they won't work that Monday again for eight weeks because they're going to be working 24 hours on, two days off, 24-hour shifts off, one day a 24-hour shift, and then they'll have four days off. That shift schedule is um, used by a lot of the full-time area departments around here. There's a couple that do one day on, one day off, one day on, five days off. Um, but for our area, the one on, two off, one on, four off is more normal. So <clears throat> when I looked at that, when I looked at the area departments that are full-time, that's where I came up with some of the changes in the personnel policy. I don't know if everybody got a chance to look at it. I can go through every change that I made if you'd like. Um, are you going to the bigger ones? It's up to you guys. I have a couple of questions on, but whatever you guys want to do. Yep, yeah, go ahead. Do you want to hit the bigger ones and then we can ask questions? But... Sure. Um, so like we discussed, just discussed that FLSA, so our work period would be seven days with overtime after 48 hours. Uh, and this shall constitute a 7K election under the FLSA. Um, can I interrupt you as you go on? Because yep. I'm a little confused here. It's seven days <clears throat> yep. um, with X days off after 48 hours. The 48 hours is a straight run, or it's uh, in how many how many days does it take to get 48 hours? Two so, days, three days, two, two, two days. I can give you that. So this is broken down to our payroll week, yeah. week one. Um, and then how many shifts they're going to do, how many hours they're going to work, and then that's the total for our pay period. Because right now we get paid bi-weekly. So in the first week, they'll work 96 hours yep. total, and then the next week, 72, and then 96, 72. So it's a rotation. So this is the FLSA. We can go from a 7-day, 8-day, 9-day, 14-day, 21, all the way to 28 days. And then that tells us when we have to pay them the overtime. So oh, okay, that's what I was interested in. Is when do they when do they start getting overtime? So because they're going to be normally working the forty eight hours a week. Yeah. I am asking to do a seven day work period, and then get paid overtime after the forty eight hours. So there'll be two times in that eight week cycle that they'll be working a twenty four hour shift. So they'd have to work another twenty four hour shift bef at regular rate before they get overtime because overtime would be after 48 hours. Okay. What I've been struggling with with the, the lawyer, we've been going over back and forth, like I said, for two months, is that most area departments average 42 hours a week, and the overtime is, af the overtime is written down so that it's any scheduled shift that's not their normal work schedule. So it's anything outside their normal days. I know that firefighter like shift a is going to be working i know what day they're going to work next year because it's the same schedule they just rotate around and we can map out their schedule that far so what other area departments do is they're just saying it's a 42 hour work week you're going to get overtime anything outside of that and we're kind of fighting back and forth on the regulations and he's looking at it as the flsa which we're doing but i'm just looking at other contracts and other personnel policies um, that do what I'd like to do. 
because that's one of my concerns is that those two 24-hour weeks, they have to work another shift at regular rate before they can even get close to the overtime rate. Right. But he's saying to stay within FLSA, we have to do the seven days and 48 hours. So that's what I want. Mm -hmm. It's a whole, I will tell you, I've been working on this for two months. Okay. I've reached out to bloggers that I know who are firefighters and lawyers that understand all this. I've emailed people, I've tried to get a hold of NHMA, I've talked to our town lawyer, I've reached out to full-time firefighters elsewhere, I've reached out to unions to talk about this stuff. I mean, it's a big deal and I want to make sure that the town's doing it correctly and I want to make sure that the firefighters are getting what they should as well, so. Okay. It just it, it strikes me as being a little complicated when I Oh yeah. So, <laughs> it's very yeah, complicated. Yeah. Yeah. You've done a great job trying to untangle it and make it make sense, so thank you. Um, and if you do have any questions, there's a great website that I found called firefighterovertime.org. And I actually reached out to the gentleman that runs the website. Um, he has a ton of different articles. The problem is every article is kind of close to what we're going to do, but it's <laughs> not, not exactly what we're going to do. Um, but I did reach out to him and I talked to him for over an hour on the phone. Um, he's not a licensed lawyer to practice in New Hampshire, so he could only tell me his opinion and things that he's you know, seen in the past. But he definitely helped me out understanding a lot of the stuff and, and reading the articles made me better understand the 7K exemption and FLSA. So. It's a, def it's a good website. Okay. I'm sorry to keep interrupting, but uh, how about, uh, are there any neighboring towns that are going this way? Or are we, uh, in other words, is, uh, is Durham going on this kind of a, of a... So Durham's on another schedule, or the same schedule, sorry, different work period. That's, they average it out at 42. That's what I'm trying to get with the lawyer. I'm trying to talk to him and see how they do it. And there's a lot of area departments that he's saying that they're doing it the wrong way. So I'm trying to balance up the two and figure out what's right and what's wrong. You know, by the law, doing the seven day work period, 48 hours, we're okay. Yeah. That's from the town lawyers. Well, <coughs> what we don't want to do is implement it and then have to change because of, you know, something. So we need to be sure we do our homework on this because it's not, it's not easy. I totally agree. And I've been, like I said, the two, last two months I've been working on this. But I feel like we're in a, we're kind of having an issue right now with the nighttime coverage. I just did payroll today, and I didn't even have half the shifts covered. So I have, we have no coverage at night, and it's up to whoever just comes out. So what I would like to do is make the 24-hour schedule effective October 4th and just get this ball rolling. I've talked to all the full-timers. We've had plenty of meetings. I've communicated everything with them. They're aware that this is what's going to happen. Um, I've told the town lawyer and I've told them that I'm going to continue talking out, talking to other people to reach out to see if we can make that 42 hour and the, the overtime rate, if we can make that. Um, but it's been a struggle to find the right person. A lot of the people that I've talked to, that contract, that piece of the contract has been in there since the 70s. So anybody negotiating the contracts now knows that it's in there. They don't know why or how. Um, it was the same thing that I had the issue with doing this, the shift swaps that we discussed at one point. Mm -hmm. Everybody I talked to was like, well, I know it's legal because we do it, but I don't know why it's legal. Well, that took me and Denise a couple weeks to find out how we could, and we did find the law on it. Um, but that's been kind of the struggle with all of this is everybody, you know, the bigger department's been doing it for so long that they don't know why they do it, they just do it. Um, some of the other things in the personnel policy is just like attendance when the firefighters call out. It's just kind of, it's more of our policy that the full-time firefighter calls the station, talks to the other full-time firefighters so that we do have coverage. Um, if I'm coming on to shift tomorrow morning, I have to call the full-time firefighters on shift and tell them that I won't be in because I'm sick. And then it's up to that full-time firefighter to either cover the shift or to find somebody else to work that shift. So we always have the full-time firefighter coverage. That's something that I wanted to continue. Um, the overtime we talked about, 
The other bigger ones is that I'm looking at the firefighters working the 24-hour shifts. And like I said, our personnel policy is set up for 40 hours a week, eight hour days. Um, so what I would like to ask the board is that we look at the personal days, the vacation leave, and the sick leave. Um, and what I would like to propose is for the personal days, they get, the full-time firefighters get um, two 24-hour personal, two 24-hour shifts, which would be their personal days off. And then the vacation leave, because it's 24 hours, and it's going to take them so much longer to add up the hours for the vacation leave because they accrue it. Instead of the first year of employment at 6.67 hours, started at eight hours for that first year. Um, and then the sick leave, I'd like to ask the board to allow them to accrue a rate of 12 hours per month instead of the eight hours per month. But they would max out at 540. The current um, max time for six time, sick time for the the other employees like myself for 40 hours is 640 hours. So they would accrue some of the hours a little bit faster than the rest of us, but on the long-term side of things, it would be the same as all of us. That was a lot. No, that makes sense. Though. And um, looking at the personal days of vacation and the sick, I looked at other full-time departments to see what they were doing, and it's the same. It makes sense. I have a motion. Uh, I have a problem with those last things that you covered because now we're treating our employees differently, and that's an issue for me. So. I understand why you propose this, but I'm not in favor of that at all, um, because that's treating our employees differently, and I've never been a fan of that. So I understand why you're doing it, but I'm, I don't agree with that. But if somebody has a day, <coughs> if they're a 24-hour 20, a shift, and they need the day off, it doesn't help. Like they're still, their days are just different. So. Right. Which is the piece that you're... Well, the person, let's take personal days, for instance. Yeah. So if I'm a regular employee, I get two personal days each calendar. Year. That's 16 hours. He's proposing to give them 24 hours okay. per year. That's more. Got it. So you're saying that. Yeah. And, and I have less of a problem with the sick leave in terms of starting it a little bit faster. But if we're going to do it for the firefighters, we need to do it for everybody else. Mm -hmm. And the same thing for in terms of, what's the other one? The vacation the Vacation. Thing. So... I'm just not in favor of that. Uh, I think the board needs to talk about how that in, you know, implicates, have implications. The other one is the bereavement leave. You give people three days off. That's fine, that's 24 hours. But he wants to propose to give them two 24 hours, that's 48 hours. Mm -hmm. That's not fair. Yeah. So that's what I have a problem with. So um, that's where I am. Okay, so we're done. We'll, we'll, we'll take it under discussion. Is there anything that we can do right now because he did say that he needs to get that sh shift changed? So that can, is there a piece of it we can pass forward? Is there anything we can make sure that, he, that the coverage is happening? Well, do those two things go together? No, the biggest thing for me is that the board approves the seven-day work period right. and overtime after 48. I'm fine with that. And then we'll just yeah. put a hold on the work right. that out. I think we're good there. It's the, it's okay. the other that we need to look at. And in terms of the other thing, and, and this is my opinion, in terms of the other things that you're requesting, I, I hold you to the bottom line in your budget. If you want to move things around, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of moving budget lines, just keep the budget as it is and just charge where you need to charge. Um, I'm personally not going to hold you if you know. If your full-time lieutenant's at zero, and you just stay right, within. That's perfectly fine. Just stay within the bottom line. Just stay yeah. within the bottom line. Yeah. My thing was more just housekeeping to yeah. work with Joanne, so that because we don't have a full-time lieutenant, it was just to move it down to the full-time firefighter, so I can actually look at what we're spending on that full-time firefighter. Yeah, that makes sense. I completely understand where you're coming from, but for me, it's just okay. you know we're going to be negative whatever in one. 
but we're gonna have all this money in the other one. And I Which know bottom line, you know, I understand for me, that. I, that doesn't bother me. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't bother me. And in terms of uh, if your budget is five hundred thousand dollars and you spend four ninety nine, I'm perfectly fine. If you go over, then I want an explanation of why you went over. Um, but yeah, I'm perfectly fine with you going negative personally. Yeah, I don't know about the rest of the two. Well, yeah. um, I'd rather keep the budget the way it is because then when you go in next year, you're probably going to ask for a lieutenant. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but then we can change it at that particular time. Right. So I'm fine with that. Okay. Great. Sir. Okay, so we have a motion. Uh, move to approve the use of ARPA funding to purchase a vehicle exhaust removal. No. Sir. But that was, that was the old one. Right. I'm sorry? That's the old one. Move to the next. That's the old one? That's the previous. Just really quickly, do we have a plan for when we can get back to the chief about, about these days so we can tell the people that work with us? Are we going to I think we need to discuss it because it has implications. Right. So, so that we know when we're looking at it, so that we can know when we're looking at it. Right. No, the, one on the, the, the one on the next page is relative to what he just discussed. Mm -hmm. It's not about the ARPA funding. For we're not doing ARPA. We're just going to do this one. And Why so aren't we doing the ARPA last one? Because you're taking that one under advisement. And then the third one is just going to be modified. I'm going to modify. <laughs> to say the work period, to approve the work period of seven days and overtime over 48, right? Correct. So, so moved. So moved. That is the thing. All right. We just need a second. Second. Vote. Motion passes. <laughs> just, uh, did you vote? <laughs> we just did. <laughs> <laughs> I was told the language that you said. Okay. We got Fourth. a second. Oh, okay. okay. And I guess we voted, but I didn't remember voting, but that's okay. But I voted. Oh, I thought you said. Okay. No, I Who seconded? Maybe. I seconded. Okay. Yeah. We can vote again if that makes sure we're not going to. That's good. <laughs> Neither one of the ones we just passed had the ARPA funding issue on. Nope. That was the first thing. We're, we're, not, ready to, we're not ready to pass it. Not ready. Who's we? We just decided as a group, I thought that he was going to look into more information before we pass that. Because we have to finish the plan for the funding. For the, for the vehicle exhaust removal system? Because that, yes, because we only have 200 something thousand for the whole town, so we have to decide where that fits in. With that. I'm just going to get quotes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number three. The last one. Yeah. Um, for you, for those who don't know, uh, I am a coach for Oyster Reef Association for the hockey program. Um, I'm also the coaching coordinator, so I would like to ask the board to allow Oyster Reef Association to use the meeting room downstairs on September 28th, um, 7 to 9, <coughs> so that we can have our coaches meeting. Um, we're bringing in USA Hockey to do a big program. We need the space. We talked to Matt Globe. We don't really have the space at their facility, so I was wondering if we could use it. Any Insurance? It's coming. <laughs> Me and Denise have been working with Matt all okay. weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with it as long as you get the insurance endorsement. That's fine. I agree. So, yes. Mr. Brown, will you? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Down, down. Finally. <laughs> Come on up. You don't want to introduce me? So I'm here to give an update to everybody on the fair. Um, I'm going to speak to the fair, and Eric can answer any questions about the dinner. So as you know, we came to the board and asked permission twice for the, for the fair, no restrictions. Um, the fair itself was scaled down, as you know, from COVID. Um, the place was <coughs> With people. <coughs> Great turnout for the fireworks, huge turnout for the dinner. Um, excellent, excellent day. Tomorrow the fair committee meets to debrief and then we'll discuss next year. Um, our hope next year is we can get pretty much back to the where it was. Um, but as a group discussing, this has not been brought to the fair committee. And I am bringing this up to this board, and if this board 
agrees with the concept, I will continue further investigation. But it was discussed through the, through the affair event and the cooking. A lot of the work for the dinner is done at the Grange, and then we lug everything down to the park. And it was mentioned that it would be nice to have a permanent building. And then it was mentioned to me that Oyster River Youth Association would also be interested possibly in paying for some, if not all, of the building. So I reached out to several people in town to, to get, if I had their support, I would continue to fight the fight, so to say. So I reached out to the police, to, police chief, the fire chief, the chairman of the Ag Commission, OROIA, and the public works director. Miss anybody? And everybody was in general consensus that having a building would be so much easier to host events like the dinner and OROA would use it if not you know help pay for it you know that's nothing's etched in stone if that was something we did so if this board is in approval of the concept to build some type of Peter White suggested like a 16 by 24 building the location nothing is etched in stone nothing is the thinking is to put it where the road goes in by the tennis court by the pickleball court be 16 by 24 16 wide 24 long it would not only provide a place to store all the food because the biggest part and eric is going to talk about the dinner is storing all the food bringing it down because traffic you, the park is it's a great park that road is it makes it difficult it's very challenging when you have a lot of people in there um if we had a place to store all that stuff did you have a question? Go ahead. Like refrigerators, they could, we can make the stuff ahead of time, bring it in, and then we just serve it out of there. It would really simplify things. Okay, so you, you answered half my question. And it would be used as a windshield for the pickleball court, which apparently is a problem. <laughs> the wind is a problem on the pickleball court. Because, I mean, the largest activity at the Grange is the cooking of everything and then mixing the salads and so on. Would all of that activity move down to the, the building or? Eric can answer that. I, I don't know. Yeah, well, he, I know. Um, he's right there. Yeah, he's going to come talk. <laughs> okay. So if you guys are, are okay with the concept, I know nothing about price, just the concept, I will trudge further. But if you guys are against it, I'll stop. I'm fine with it as long as it's the building we're talking about, but it's the furnishings I'm more concerned about. You know, what, what, is it going to include the furnishings or is that going to stay at the so grange? My hope is that I can get some, like the refrigerator downstairs, we got that donated. My hope is to get another one just like that donated. Um, and things like that. I'm hoping to do it as least expensive as possible to get everybody on board that's gonna use it, iron it all out. But before I started, I, I just got the, I, if I didn't have the support of my fellow coworkers, I wasn't gonna fight the fight, because it's no fun. Okay. So. So, speak to me, Karen, about what's in this building. What is so it? What I visualize will be in this building will be a large refrigerator, mm -hmm. a freezer, and some type of, it will depend on, the ovens will depend upon what's required by code. If it's gonna be a grill, or if it's gonna be just two ovens, all of that will be depending upon what's required by code and cost, and who's gonna pay for it. Running water? I don't know. I reached out to Dory Wigan, she's in charge of DES, and I are playing phone tag to find out if we have water, what's going to be required for a septic. I don't foresee that it would be tough to get a septic there, but I, I don't know. But she and I are playing phone tag. Madbury is just a holding tank, but that has, that's Madbury, not Lee, so I don't, we will have to do it correct. Is the water down there potable or not? It is, it is potable, but we would not market it as potable because we don't want to be a, have to worry about being a public water, water system or anything like that. But would you use it in cooking though? I have specific. to find out from DES. That's the same thing. Yeah. So I will have to find out all of that information. I just, like I said, I just wanted to find out about the concept, and if you approve the concept, I'll take it to the next step. But if you guys say not interested, I'm done. Yeah, I just have a couple questions. It would be used how many times a year? The town. So next, so the rec commission at the last meeting has um, decided that next year we're not going to do the music in the park series. We're going to do once a month, starting in June. We're going to do family night. We're going to have food, <coughs> entertainment, live music, and for <coughs> kids to do. So theoretically, it'll be used four times. It'll be used once a month, June, July, August, and September by the Rec Commission for food. Then the fair will use it, so that's five. And then if, if ORWA, as an example, helps pay, they will use it for their events as well. 
So what about if we were able to rent an RV or something that we use those few times as a put I'm concerned only because I'm looking at so many buildings in our town that are in desperate need of repair and fixing. And I'm just wondering, is there, is there, if that's the issue, we would need to have a place, we need to have a building, the, you know, refrigerators, freezers, stoves, is that something we could do where we could rent something? Or I'm just wondering about other ways, only because I, I just don't, I'm looking at the budget and thinking how do we, how do we add a building when we can't, we haven't cared for the ones we have? Yeah. Great point. And then in my thinking too, the average age of the person working the dinner, there's, there's not, thank God there's not an Eric, another Eric Sautel. I mean, it's good, but it's bad, but <laughs> me. Eric, Eric has spent, spends like, I think it was eight days for that barbecue. Oh, yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, it is. And nobody else is going to step up and do that. So if we had a place just to simplify it, yeah. the chances of it carrying on are greater. Yeah, absolutely. But like I said, it's up to, is a wagon or camper or RV or whatever possible? Sure. Eric saw a food trailer for sale. Yeah. But and you pull it out on you know when you need it and then you know you would already have the appliances in it exactly yeah. right yeah. Yeah. and then if you need it someplace else because you have another festival or whatever you have that option yeah. you know, okay yeah. Yeah. I'm saying in general anyway I'm on the fence. I'm not against it, but I'm not for it either. So you want me to do a little bit more work and then see and come Maybe. back? Well, I think I think the issue about the water is very important mm -hmm. because they use a lot of water for washing the dishes, the fans, etc., etc. So there certainly needs to be a water a water source. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we have a well, so that's done. Yeah. It's just what the like I said. I didn't do any. I called Dory Wick. I'm um, not Dory. I'm sorry. Um, Don Buker at DES. We played phone tag. But that's as far as I've gone, other than speaking to fellow coworkers, because it. Well, I think that we can. What we can do is just let you work on it a little bit more and get some more information, and then also look into the mobile, if you would, mm -hmm. mobile kitchen, whatever, well, whatever, some other, uh, yeah. and, and see how that works. But uh, and then come back with your recommendation. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys have any comments or questions about the actual fair activity itself? My my comments on the fair is that it just. Went, I think as perfect as a fair can, can do. The, the, the people had a lot of very positive comments about the venue. Uh, certainly, you, you've got to, to look at all the help we had putting that together from the volunteers on up to Eric and his merry band and the fire department and everybody and the police department and so on. And everything just clicked. It just moved right along. The ice cream line moved right along. The bingo, I think, was very well attended. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't see how it could have. I don't see how it could have gone any better. Right. Thank it was you. so nice to see people out and enjoying and being together and, and doing that safely. It was excellent. Thank you so much. Well, yeah, it was, as you all know, fireworks was people everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Which was great. Except for the limited cherry selection at the. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Do you want to talk about the dinner? Oh, I have some other. Oh, sure, things. absolutely. Um, one thing, um, and it was great. I enjoyed it, except the lines were kind of long. Um, you did get some suggestions. Hopefully, the committee will look at those. They talked about a vegetarian option or something like that. And I liked your idea in terms of the macaroni and cheese. Thank thing you. For the Eric's logistics. here to talk about the dinner. Yeah, All right. Uh, but in terms of logistics, could you guys also? Um, Put something in the e-crier and get people's, you know, like, what you like? Do you have any suggestions? Kind of getting sure. some feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing, how did the nonprofit go in terms of the thing? Did they make some money? Were they the bingo? About it or? They did make money, but what they they had never run bingo either. What they did was every game, the prize was 50-50 of what was paid for. So next year, they're going to look at giving pri donated prizes instead of money as a prize. Okay. So instead of making $1,000, they made 500 because yeah. half of the money was given back. Okay. But they, um, it was great, they, they had a great time, great exposure. Okay. Yeah. And like I said to them when we talked that night, you know, it's our first time doing it. Yeah. So, you know, just got to get the word out. Uh, and also, just thinking in terms of your e cry thing about ask people if there's interest in volunteering because mm, okay. you're starting up again. And the last comment I have is submit your expense things to the trustees <laughs> so we can get this done by November. 
Don't let them lose. Tomorrow night. There'll be no losing this year. Nice. No losing. Almost done. We don't have many expenses this year, which is great. Which is good. Yeah, great. And Eric wants to address the dinner. Perfect. And we're, and we're glad that there's only one first, Eric's yeah. hotel. <laughs> Thank you all. Um, and thanks to everybody who helped out. It took about 32 people to run that operation, just the dinner. So it's not a small undertaking. Um, if you've got questions, suggestions, let me know now so we can think about it. Well, they had the, we already talked about the macaroni and cheese, the vegetarian option. What was the other thing I heard? Um, there was, something was there else. somebody that was complaining because they didn't? Oh, there's apples and onions. There was not anyone I got there, so that's a good thing. <laughs> well, they sold a record number of tickets. So, yeah, that so let me give you a rundown here. Not knowing what to expect this year, um, we went pretty much by what we had two years ago. As far as numbers, I had made enough, just getting out on a limb, I had made enough food for about 400 people, at, and that included 25 extra chickens from what we had before. Uh, we had a 222 pound pig plus 40 pounds of pork butts just mm -hmm. to be on the safe side. Had more corn than I had originally ordered. Um, we fed 395 people. Mm -hmm. And at 4.30, 4 Linda Reinhold was taking tickets. I don't know if you would. I would take it. Um, and I think there was something like 67 tickets that have been sold. Mm -hmm. So how do you know? We were selling we, tickets like crazy. That's we cool. ran out. We ran out of chicken. We ran out of apples and onions. We ran out of five bean, seven bean salad. We ran out of tomato salad. We ran out of pickles. Pickles. We ran <laughs> out of. We had one serving spoon left of baked beans from 16 pounds of dry beans, which is a lot. Um, and we had about 15 pounds of pork left. Oh. I have to say, I went through after all the lines were done and everything was pretty much wrapped up, chicken without, and I had a plate full of food. It was amazing. So the fact that you, you know, made that happen is incredible. Um, well, we lucked out. It could have gone the other way. Um, would have been a lot of doggy bags. We were nervous. As far as the vegetarian option, I will say that we probably had four people ask if there was one. There was seven non-meat dishes there. If you couldn't make a meal out of those mm -hmm. seven dishes, there's something wrong. So um, it's billed as a pig roast and chicken barbecue, and those are the operative words. It's not an a la carte cafeteria, period. We had, I had one person that wanted to buy two dollars worth of, of potato salad and an ear of corn. I said, no. Pay the ten dollars you go through and you get what you want. Um, it is a fundraiser for the Ag Commission because we do we sort of have the attitude that we don't want to ask for town money and pay our own way. Um, I think if you start opening the gates for a vegetarian option, we didn't have ethnic foods, we didn't have cultural foods. You know, we didn't have Indian food, we didn't have Caribbean food, we didn't have French food, we didn't have English food, we had Eastern European slaw. Uh, where do you stop? We didn't have any fish. So where do you cut it off? Um, and I, I guess I would make the suggestion then if there's enough interest in it that perhaps somebody like the Sustainability Committee could put on a cosmopolitan dinner with all kinds of different cultural and ethnic foods. That would be a lot of fun. I'm not going to do it, but <laughs> somebody else could do it. Um, so the bottom line is, you know, ideas are great, but in order for them to work, somebody actually has to do something. And that's the tough part. Same with the fair. Uh, I think with a small group of people who were, everybody did a fabulous job. So. Well, that's my hope in terms of, and I know you guys put something in before, but um, your volunteers are aging, and you need some fresh blood. We did so, get some fresh blood this oh, year. Oh, you did? Yep, yeah. we did. We got four 
new people that came and served in her. Yeah, I was going to say the we youngest were, one was thirteen. That's good. That's good. Because I think she doesn't even live in Lee. Well, that's even better. But I think that's part of the particular issue you're going to have to deal with going forward is because you well, guys keep doing this great job every single year, but the, the problem is it takes a lot of time to do it, and with younger people working, mm -hmm. well, many hands make you know. Right. You know, right. So, um, you know. I just even if you didn't, you don't have to change anything. Why not just have a ticket that says vegetarian on it? To, and then the person can just skip the place and like it just for somebody just to feel like, oh, okay, I can grab a you, vegetarian. Does that matter? I mean, did you say you ate? Did you eat? Yeah, I said I ate. Yeah. Did you see anything that wouldn't have qualified as a vegetarian meal, other than meat? I mean, there were people there that didn't take meat. Right, I, I understand that. I guess what I was trying to say is that I, I had people come to me and say, oh, they don't have a vegetarian option. Like, oh, you don't have to eat the meat, you know, you have it off. And like, I just, it's just weird for me to hold a chicken or pig ticket. So that literally they were just, you know, I'm, I'm not even asking you to change anything. Can you have, you know, one, you know, a ticket that offers that. If, if that's not an option, it's not something you're interested in, then that's your choice. I just was, that's what I was asking about. Well, I guess maybe what we could do is put a sign up this. This is the menu. And if, I mean, it's, you know. Can, can I ask? I grew up in a household, and my wife grew up in a household, and our household is, is always two options for any meal. Mm -hmm. Take it or leave it. Okay. Is there, and you can explain this. Why do you have two different tickets, one for chicken, one for pork? Can you just have a ticket? Who well, obviously have not been involved in this. <laughs> honestly, hey. It is not a simple task. People buy a pork ticket and then say, oh, that chicken looks really good. I want to go over that line instead. Switch, right? Well, I only have so many chickens, first of all. And when we reach that limit, we're not selling any more chicken tickets. I see. Then you know okay. before so, you get there, you're not going to get it. So we had 155 chickens. So when I reach that limit, I'm, we're not selling any more chicken tickets. I see. And okay. the hope is that you do a lot of pre-sale, so yeah. you know what to shop for. Right. Not that that ha ever happens. No, but it would be great. It would be fantastic. <laughs> but the the most we ever sold was two years ago, pre-sale, um, three years ago. And we sold 75 tickets by Friday night. And this year, yeah, I don't think we would sold 40. Uh, part of it is the weather people just don't mm -hmm. come, you know, until the last minute. Um, and you couldn't have picked a better day mm -hmm. other than maybe today. Perfect, but, yeah. Um, I, we really lucked out with that. There have been years when it's been nip and tuck. Are we going to get blasted or are we not going to get blasted? We didn't put the tent up specifically because it was going to be a good day. And that's a major undertaking is take that tent up, put that tent up, take it down. Um, so, and we did have a huge feedback that they liked the way we had it this year. They liked the tables the scattered way, everywhere, yeah. which is yeah. great. It's mm -hmm. just gonna. And it was the, the problem with that whole thing, and and we haven't addressed it, other than the fact that being scaled back without the daytime events. There's two problems with the day, daytime events. A is getting people to run them. B, um, having the vendors there. You know, the vendors always want to be there, and then they complain because they didn't make any money. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Then have a craft day sometime. Invite all the vendors. Okay. Okay. And one of the problems that the select board asked us a couple of years ago to address in the next fair was that no traffic in and out. Right. Once the, so we really were trying to do, that was tough because people want to drive in and out. So if you have vendors, as an example, they, they, have, to they have to stay, and they don't, I mean, the band, I told the band when they got there, you have to stay, and then they tried to sneak out when they were done at 7.30 with hundreds of people around, and you, you can't, it's not, it's dangerous. And this year, next year, the fireworks going to have to come back this way, away from the wood because, line. Because oh. they were up towards the woods. So that's going to push the safety line back into the field more. Yeah. So if we had vendors... We just, we lose everything. Can, can we, one of the things I think, I don't remember how many years ago we've talked about it. You know, when you're looking at a park like this, pavilions right in front of you, put an access road along that side. Can we look at that? Because I yes. think that would solve part of our problem. Yes. We well, have to do a road. It's only part of the problem if you have people between the road and the pavilion. My suggestion would be to 
rope that off or put a permanent fence between the road and the pavilion, keep people out of there from there over to the woods. Uh, and have, if we're going to have the cooking area where we head at this time instead of down by the pavilion, um, just keep people out of that whole quadrant over there and make them come through the bridge area. The bridge, yeah. Have someone stand there with the clicker so we know how many people are coming in and out. And that will give us a better idea. Can, can we ask the fair committee to look at that? If uh, that's a better we'll solution than... That's already yes, tomorrow night. Yep. Okay, and so. then Steve did mention the road. Yep. yep. So if Steve, if we were to... So the road, putting that road in, Steve mentioned the other day, if we put the building in down there, mm -hmm. because in thinking about that, a problem with having the trailer is you don't have any storage space for the big refrigerator, mm -hmm. and that's huge. I mean, maybe it comes a point in time that we don't do the ag dinner. I mean, that just... Mm -hmm. okay. But anyway, he said, you know, we could do this and this and extend that road, but we can look okay. into that because it's unfortunately that road, the way the layout of the park has some flaws. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, you, you can rent temporary barricades too if it's not something, you know, if you only need it for that one day mm -hmm. and you don't want to change the layout, you can rent the, the temporary barriers for just that day. Well, you can do Put it with a caution tape down. You know, yeah. Police line tape. <laughs> yeah, um, people walk through that. And it, and it grips, but well, they I, should have I've cars got the out there technology anyway. to electrify that. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't have cars out there on a on a. I don't think on a sporting day you should have people driving out there either. Right. There's no real people can walk. Okay, it's dangerous. As a group, can take a look and mm -hmm. see okay. if we come up with some solution to that. We haven't met yet, so tomorrow night's our first meeting. Yeah. So okay. they haven't, you know. We're going to debrief and discuss what we liked and thought we should do for next year and you know what events we want to add back for next year. I will say I had a lot of comments and I'm sure everybody's had comments that was the best fireworks we've seen in a mm -hmm. long time. Mm -hmm. And I, I would ask the fair committee or the select board to write a letter to Atlas and say, here's our feedback. We thought it was great. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. They did a good job. 26 can minutes. It, can we get it the same price for next year? Yes, we already did. Oh, okay. <laughs> now we just need to You don't budget. have any money yet. I know. Now we just need to get it in the budget. Okay. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, and just to give you some, uh, to finish the rundown on the, on the dinner, uh, we kept the price the same way it was. I scrambled a little bit to try to get some of the stuff donated um, and had to search around for the best price on a lot of stuff. but. Uh, we brought in $3,360 uh, $3, and probably our expenses will be less than two, I hope, way less than two. Um, we still have a couple of things like we donate some money to the Grange. We haven't decided, mm -hmm. we have a meeting next week to decide about that, but um, I think we did all right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it makes a difference keeping the price down. Yeah. The church, you know, had their three chicken barbecues, and the first one they sold out in half an hour. The second one, they raised the price and uh, didn't sell out. But I think that part, partly that was in the middle of July when people were starting to mm -hmm. leave Dodge. And then the third one, um, they scaled it back a little bit. But again, I think it was because people weren't here in August. Mm -hmm. So price does make a difference, and and. Our attitude has been, let's make it a community event that is affordable to people and can, people can have a good time. Yeah. Well, I think they particularly needed this particular event mm -hmm. for them to yeah. see people it. they hadn't seen for a while and have chats and that it was amazing. Awesome. Really like, I had dubbed it a, a cabin fever reliever yeah. earlier yeah. on. Yeah. I, think it, I think it was that for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I know this is completely out of left field, but I, I, a lot of people didn't have enough cash and they like, were trying to figure out how to make that work. Is there any chance anyone down the road could look into a Venmo or PayPal option as a way somebody could, um, with their phone, pay for meals and it comes up instantly in your account? No. Just something to think about. Okay. <laughs> so much flexibility, no. thanks. <laughs> well, you should be prepared to, to bring 10 bucks with right, you and great. pay for the meal. And I'll put out their cash only if we have to. Well, and for ben Venmo, they work for, I have Venmo personally, right. but businesses have to pay a percentage for Venmo. But a nonprofit? We're not a 501c3. We're not a 501c3. Right. So wouldn't it be personal? You're just paying for your personal... But who do you pay? Right. You can't pay the Ag Commission. Right. 
because they'd have to pay a fee on that. Just like we can't we take we, checks, we take cash. Yeah. Yeah. I just but, no, I know. I personally covered somebody who didn't have any cash. Yeah. I'm not going to mention I, I any so names. So wanted to, and I know cash to do that. And then one person really wanted a meal, and I just was so sad. And I would have loved to. <laughs> you could lend them the money and have them pay you. That's what I'm saying. I had no cash to do that. Like I could have Venmo it to somebody, but I had no cash on me. I don't. I don't. I just don't use cash. Rent an ATM. Okay. We need. We need to move on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you both. <laughs> there, was, there was two of us there, what was that? Denise DeVal, you're up. Uh, the Old Town Hall asbestos report came in. Can you all receive that in your packets? Would you move your microphone down there? there Did you, you get go. a chance to see the asbestos report? Mm hmm. Okay. And Len? Yeah, lots of lead. Lots of both? The Old Town Hall asbestos report. Did you see it? Did you see it? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's so the uh, actually, it's, the good news is there's not very much asbestos at all in there. The bad news is there's a lot of lead paint. There's a lot of lead paint. Yeah, all lead. Which we knew. Yep. So. Uh, so this was done because the board wanted to see what was going on in there mm -hmm. and if the before the library, library could use. Right. I, know, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that we still have an answer. Lead paint is lead paint is lead paint. Whether they think the children can children can't be in in around all those things because they could get bored and yeah, get exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and it, a lot of it as as it uh, wears, it, it it's dust. Uh, you know, it has a lot of forms to it. So. I don't. I don't have an answer for the library. I don't know. The thing is, I perused it. I didn't read all 69 pages of it, but um, I don't know if Denise, if you read it, because we know outside lead paint. Uh, yeah. Inside, I'm inside specifically, which rooms have the lead paint? I, I, I didn't go that deep. I did. You did? Yeah. I, mean, I thought it was mostly outside. I just remember reading, I, I know it said look inside that side and then I have the things I can, I can pull it up, but. Um, well, I think for me that would be oh. if they can use it or not. Is the outside, I'm okay with, what were you but it's inside. It looks like upstairs oh. there appears to be. I mean, it gives a uh, lead paint on the second floor. But how about on the first floor? Right. But you've got to get the out, of course, first. Yeah. Well, it doesn't say this. What? Wall meeting room. I guess I'm not sure. Window well bath. Which? Where is that? Yeah. That should be on the outside. That should be the outside. Outside. Yeah. But I guess for that, I I'd rather go through and just see what exactly it is. Outside, I'm okay. It's been there forever. But mm -hmm. it's inside downstairs. And that's the part that I didn't delve deep enough in to find out. And what if it's not doing. flaking, it should be okay. It says, uh, let's see, all exterior, all exterior and exterior paint should be treated as lead-based paint unless sampled that would be noted. And that's which they do that in the, in the report. Yeah. Uh, they give you a table of lead paint chip sampling results based on uh, all of the exterior uh, and the interior rooms. And uh, certainly for a, a, where a lot of it exists right now is up in the soffits and so on and so forth where it hasn't gotten a lot of wear and tear, you know, it's just sitting there. But it's not going to be when you look at asbestos, except for a nine by nine floor tile, there was no asbestos. And that's in the clerk's office. Huh? That's in the clerk's office. Yeah. So. Didn't the quote say that it would be about fifty five thousand dollars to fix all of it to remediate all yeah. of it? Was that right? So that's our well, reasonable. Ten to fifty or something. He wrote ten to fifty. Yeah. So there's a very reasonable amount to take care of and mitigate those issues. If that would make it then usable. But 
Yeah. Well, I don't think we're in a position to pass. <laughs> All right, I don't enough. think so. I would want to. I did not have time to go and look at every single page of that, so I would want to see in terms of what it is downstairs. So that's the part they want to use. Mm -hmm. So, but we can say what's not down there is asbestos. Yeah, but the rest of it is still yeah. going to have a lead paint issue. It looks like mm -hmm. all through it. I don't see lead paint on the first floor, but anyone else read it? I didn't see it. On the first floor? No. What, you didn't see any lead paint yeah. on the first floor? No. I've already been looking at the pictures. I apologize. Um, can, yeah, I'm going to delegate. And she's going to hate this, but can we have our health officer and or building inspector take a look at the report and give us their expert opinion in terms of what the issue is or issues. Uh, she's saying yes. Yes. No, yes, I yeah, and Mr. Tappan has a wants to talk. Mr. Mr. Brown. Mr. Tappan would like to Okay. Did did you read the last line on page four under asbestos laboratory analytical method? I'm not sure. I scanned. It says uh, that polarized light microscopy mascros is not consistently reliable in detecting asbestos in floor tiles. Okay. So where you have a negative, it recommends that you do an additional test. Okay. But that is that still on the tiles or on everything? That's on, that would be on the negative on the entryway type tiles. Okay. So you're saying that they're not sure that they're asbestos, they, they could be. So, okay. You're down there underneath the results. Is that where you're looking at? Uh, page four. Yeah. Right above the results. Yes, yeah. yeah. under the results. The just above the results. Just above it. The old floor tiles. Oh, just above. Well, it says the results of the analysis of samples taken and talk no. about a floor tile in the town clerk's office contains asbestos. The results also show some of the interior and exterior paints contain lead. He was looking right above the okay, word results. I'm looking right underneath. Yeah, where it right says. above it. Look right above it. John read that line. Polarized light. Yeah, it says it's not consistently reliable in detecting asbestos mm -hmm. in floor tiles. So they ask you to do further microscopy mm -hmm. for the for the floor tile samples. And this you're concerned with for the for them to go in to walk across to get to the other? Well, well, that's why I asked if they can give us their opinions. Because we walked around across it for eight years and that's what's wrong with us. <laughs> <laughs> why can't you just seal it? Or remove it. Right. Well if you remove it. Yeah, there might be a way of just spray coating it with something. I don't know. Is that not the area that got wet? Is that the middle area? Is that what the difference? I'm not sure. The town clerk's it. office itself got wet. Okay. But not the well, hallway. Well, the hallway got wet. Hallway wet. But it came in from, yeah. it didn't get as wet as the town clerk's right. office. Okay. I, well, I think the other question is how much money do you want to put into just a band aid? I mean, what, what are we going to do to the building? You know, for yes. it's, if you would, it's completely furnished. Mm -hmm. Well, if the health officer can take a look and see what she thinks, if she thinks there's no risk to children going in and out using that particular thing, that's fine. Uh, you can also check with Mr. Damaris and see his thoughts in terms of somebody accessing the building and using the downstairs building. I would not allow them upstairs, so. So as far as the <coughs> invoice goes, the 900. You should be able to pay them the 950 dollars. Yes. We would like that money to come out. Office manager. 
can you actually sell the data? data? I, mean, I think it should come from the good data. Contingency, that's right. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Great. Any motion? Any motion for that? No. For the contingency bond? Under that? No. Okay. I think general consensus will charge it to the contingency bond. Yep. Perfect. So if you move it. The next thing is the office manager, or as the study might say, executive assistant. Oh. I'm not sure. This is where she, she took my job descriptions and, and yes, put it together. To so many she took the job, MRI took the job descriptions and meshed them together. And I'm not sure if office manager is where she's going to land, but the job description that I put in is just a draft I put together so that she would have something to go th go by as far as what I have, what I do now. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to look at it. Any comment? No? Okay. It just came today. Yeah. I didn't see it until... The, <coughs> the office back was in the agenda from... I didn't get a chance to see it until oh. today, so... Oh. You didn't get on Friday? Yeah, I did, but... Oh. I have a personal life. Okay. So things happen <laughs> in my personal really? life. Really? Can I get one of those? It takes time. So, no, I didn't get a chance to read uh, that particular thing. Okay. We can just do it. It's not... I did, however, send it to her as a draft and just let her have something else to work. Um, the next two items I would like to move, have them move into non public to discuss under RSA 91A under L because I have uh, recommendations from the town attorney for both of, on both of those items that I'd like to discuss in there. So that's C and D? C and that's C and D. D you're talking about? C and D, yeah. Okay. And then the MRI classification, E, um, I did send that out. That didn't go out till today. Um, I didn't get it till today. Um, and it's still in draft form. Um, I'm not sure if anyone, I showed it to you, but I'm not sure if you had a chance to see it. Um, okay. is, are we going to get something more than this? Because the thing that I'm missing is, okay, she's got, or they have numbers from these different towns but like for instance i'm just picking the top one finance officer and they've got rates for all those particular towns but i don't know if the finance officer and lee has been here for 20 years or they just hired him last week right so for me there's a longevity issue here so they've got a big range from epping at eighty-one thousand to lee at fifty-six thousand. so is the Epping person been there for 20 years, or have they were here there, you when know, did they two weeks? I can ask about um, if length of time was calculated into this. Um, yeah, in terms of, this, I would think they would have that information, but I'm, I'm not sure if this is just, because we asked for a preliminary, Apple, Apple. is there other things coming besides that? See, part of the problem is no, that the, they're all one each. Is, you know, it's not like they have a salary. Yeah. Uh, I did know, not see, and I don't think, Julie saw the how they collected the data or the questions they used in collecting the data. I can find out, I can ask for certain questions okay, well, to see what they have. Just in terms of the time I spent just looking over this, that's the thing that I'm missing. Um, so, so you'd like to find out more about what they asked to collect? Yeah, in terms of if they have any longevity um, numbers, so like Finance officer Lee, how long has they, have they been there? Okay. Uh, finance officer in Epping, how long have they been there? I'm just picking those two, but I want to go. Or that might just be the salary for any finance. I mean, that's just their salary scale that they've established. They'll pay for the finance officer. Yeah. It's just regardless, you know. I want to know a little bit more. Huh? I okay. would want to know a little bit more. Yeah, well, I agree with that. I think it's uh, at least important to know whether it's a uh, the salary structure that they have, or in terms of the Yes. Uh, yes. Degree or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> Beautiful. Thanks for getting that together. Yeah. Let's see. C has been moved to non-public. We, we just talked about the salary survey. Miscellaneous. Who's she? 
<laughs> I'm all set. I don't have anything. <laughs> okay. You can send it to the side. Yeah, we're still going to send it to you. Are we done? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, number seven, then make a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. Can I get a second? Second. Roll call of vote. Selectman Bugby? Yes. Select person Casper? Yes. Selectman Brown? Yes. Motion passes. Any miscellaneous unfinished? Oh, here we go. Oh, that's not too bad. And then I have the S1. Oh, okay. That's the whole thing, but you'll need to sign one page. I, I will make a number. Don't go across this line yet. I hear you, and I, I want to respect that. I will work harder to. But. Oh, I don't like change either, do you? So hear you, but don't do it this time, do it next time. I'm just listening. September 10th, that was 10 days ago. Um, they were, um, there were 12 um, spreadsheets. Uh, there are six PDFs. Um, uh, they went out to the department heads and to commission chairs, except for the Conservation Commission, um, because theirs is so simple, there's no point in giving them a spreadsheet. <laughs> Oh. Um, but the uh, fire chief um, got a PDF and two spreadsheets, library trustees a PDF and two spreadsheets, public works director PDF and four little spreadsheets, recreation commission one of each, um, and the um, acting town administrator uh, one uh, PDF and two spreadsheets. Uh, the spreadsheets are just the the spreadsheets were just the um, user input, um, and then the PDF was a copy of that user input, but reformatted so that they could um, print it out and uh, make changes. Um, and the instructions were they could either send back uh, spreadsheets to me, 
Um, they could print the PDF, make changes with pencil or paper, and scan it and send it back. Um, or they could give the paper to Denise, and she would tell me it's here and come pick it up. Um, and that's the story. Great. Um, I gave them no instructions on when to complete it. That's your job. Um, and <coughs> so, when do the department heads think they can get that back to us so we can? Well, that's my, I, I didn't get one. Oh, okay. Oh no, there's the police chief did not get one because um, there's no. Um, reserve fund or trust fund that relates to police. Or, or me. Same for the same I, reason. Again, for the same reason. Yep. Yes, it's, it's not all department heads, it's just those ones I listed. Okay. Um, fire chief, public works director, um, town administrator, and then the library trustees and the recreation commission. Okay. Um, and the conservation commission, I did send uh, the chair an email that explained what was going on. Um, and that if she had any questions about it or wanted to make changes, um, but pointed out that right now um, the only thing that's listed is a, um, a dummy sort of placeholder of a, a possible purchase. Okay. So of the people that did get them, when you think you can get them back to us, <laughs> or back to John? While also organizing. For the year. Oh, um, I should say one other thing, and maybe to reemphasize, um, I did point out they don't have to complete, you know, especially in the case of like our public works um, director who has um, four spreadsheets, four different funds um, with, I don't know, probably 60, 70 line items. There's a lot of line items there. Um, I pointed out that uh, you don't have to have them all finished. As soon as one of them is finished, you can send it back. Okay. Um, so. Okay. So same for any of. When do we want them back? Because initially we said we wanted to do the buildings first, so that would be a steep thing. And and that is the biggest. That has thirty something line items, right. um, and all of them in the spreadsheet and also in the um, PDF. Um, I left many lines for them to add extra, you know, items that aren't listed. Yeah. Um, but that one is by far the biggest. That's a, that's a third of the whole thing. So, and also probably the most unknowns, most okay. difficult to get the information. So how do we want to proceed? Do we want to just start with whichever ones come back first? I'm just trying to move the process forward because this has to be done in concert with the budgetary process. Yeah, there's so, no way to know what, what other things are if you don't you know. You have it on the ABC for what, November, to review it, November? But, yeah, but still the board needs to go through the process as well, mm -hmm. and that's a lot of work between now and December, whatever it was. Could we pick a day for, um, I mean, there's, I don't know, I feel like that's a lot uh, of how difficult is it for them to, to fill this for it Depends on which person. Yes, well, depends on which group. Yeah, I mean, some of these are um, have uh, three or four line items on them, five line items. But, but, uh, um, and some of them are, as you mentioned, like... They just have to put in numbers based on... I mean, is that what... Right. Yeah. I'm just well, trying to get a okay, feel so, for what data we're so, so to pick one, fire ponds and cisterns, mm -hmm. there's like five line items, yeah. um, and maybe he wants to change dates, maybe he wants to add something else. Okay, so it's more um, than just the, the funding part, there's... D details. It's, it's um, what date do you expect, and you know, what's the fiscal year that you expect the expense to be incurred, um, and how much is it expected to cost, um, and then what type of estimate do you have? Is this based on just a guess? Is it um, based on quotes and so forth? Um, and and I also did point out that this is a this is a work in progress. The goal is continuous improvement. So that should mean that there is no expectation that every one of these is is you know <laughs> has three quotes for everything. I mean nothing like that. Um, and also. 
that the emphasis should be on um, the most expensive and the soonest. So things that are expected to happen next year or the year after, it's much more important to nail those down and also things that are very expensive to nail those down um, before you get to the small things that are 10 or 10 years away. But doesn't some of the, that information already exist on the CIP format? Not for the buildings. Uh, Not for the buildings? Yeah. Um, for the town buildings, um, there's uh, like 40% of the line items are right out of the CIP. There are line items in the CIP. And those were copied. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and many of the rest of the line items are things that came from the previous committee, and they were estimates from the previous committee, so those are entered in there. Um, and then there's some others where I talked to uh, Steve, and he gave me estimates. So essentially, everything that's listed has an estimate um, and a date of that estimate. Uh, there's very few where there's a um, an assessment of what kind of estimate is it? Is this a, is this a guess? Is this um, you know the quality of the estimate? So can we can we figure out a date and then if there's somebody's having challenges or struggles, we can absolutely discuss with them. So today's the twentieth. Yeah. So how about if we say? <laughs> October 13th. It's a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Let's schedule a separate meeting just to come to this particular issue. I agree. Uh, that gives them three weeks, and whatever they've got, that's what they've got. Does that sound good to Chief? understand how much it takes to fill this out. Yeah, that, that gives them a month from the time they've received it to fill the form out. Is yeah, and some take? of them are going to need all that time. Is that right? Okay. Steve's going to be the one that's going to have the hardest time. Yeah. He's already started working out, though. I know yeah. that. But yeah. that gives them time. Steve, Steve them. has more than half the, yeah. the whole task. Yeah. More than half Steve. of it falls to Steve. Yeah. Yeah. But so, I do know he's been working on so let's say the 13th, and we'll take whatever we've got at that time. That doesn't mean that they can stop looking, you know, if they've still got more to do. Right, and things come up in that. Yes, That'd but I'd like to, on the 13th, start with the buildings. Does that make sense to everyone? From there. Okay. So what are you expecting to have to look at on the 13th? Uh, I expect um, the new high-resolution projector to be utilized for displaying those particular spreadsheets. So he would so, do that sooner so they can put it so, in the computer. So the spreadsheets that they received um, didn't have any of the functional part to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they were sent out to you if you got copies of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't um, see it, but, but it was just the input That's cells. Um, so when that comes back to me, then I put that into the financial planning tool Yep. which is the tool that you look at right. to yep. see what the implications are. So how long do you need from the, before the 13th to have that information so that you have enough time to, to input that? Um, if, if these were to start coming in within a week, you know, some of these mm -hmm. were to start coming in within a week, um, and it was to progress sort of linearly, um, if I got the last of them, a week before you want the presentation? Mm -hmm. The 6th? Yeah. Great. So, what right? if they all come in on the 6th and there's lots of questions? <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's right. Well, we'll go with what we have on the 13th, but let's say have them to John by the 6th of October. And if you can they, get them in earlier, that would be incredibly helpful. Yes, that was that was a good segment. The sooner the better. Good. Yes. And if they come in on the seventh day or whatever, just do whatever you can do. If you don't have time, we'll just deal with what we've got. So there, there was also a third way that I listed in the email, a third way that they could do the input, um, which is just to make an appointment with me and we would sit at okay. one of these projectors and I would just okay. type the information in from whatever their notes are. Okay, okay perfect. 
So what I'm envisioning on the 13th that you'll be able to project the spreadsheet up there and the three of us will have a conversation about those particular items, ask any questions in terms of numbers, staging, details in terms of that particular thing, and then we'll schedule more meetings for the, the other remaining parts later on. But I think we should do the, the building one, which is the biggest nut, on the 13th and just move on from there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. John. So, the 13th. 13th of the right. October. October. Okay. 6 o'clock? Yeah. 6 o'clock on the 13th. 6 on the 13th of October. Post it. And we'll call it the financial planning tool. Coming out party. Coming out party. Coming out party. items there in the as well to give your input if you want. Thank but you, you don't have to if you don't want to. I mean, who want okay, I want to make a motion to enter into non-public session the New Hampshire RSA 91 hyphen A colon 3 Roman numeral 2 paren small k and B and, and L. L and L yes roll call vote required. I'll second that motion. Yes. <laughs> First can I get a second? Yes. Second. Thank you. Selectman Bugby? Yes. Select person Casper? Yes. Selectman Brown? Yes. Motion passed. Great. Thank you. But first, I move to seal the minutes from the non public session. I second that. All those in favor? Oh, uh, aye. Roll call vote. Aye. <laughs> aye. Uh, yeah. Would be uh, I. Now we can do that. Move to authority award the suburban propane. Is that what you want? Both. Yes. Huh? Yep. yep, do both. Move to withdraw the award of suburban propane for the FY22 propane contract. Move to award the FY22 propane contract to be for sure. I second that. Is it one motion or two? Well, it was two together. Oh, oh, we can mesh them together. Okay. One, one withdraws and one yeah. gives it back. Okay. okay. So did you second it I twice? Second, well, I can second it twice. Sure. Each part. Twice. I second each part. Thank you. Each part. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call vote. Select with bug me. Yes, yes. <laughs> Very good. Select person, Casper. Yes, yes. Select Brown. Yes, yes. <laughs> There's no place to sign. No, you don't have to sign that, but those you have to sign for Joanne. You won't go anywhere, yeah. Um, well, there's no place to sign on this. I'll get nope. it back. Just put yes, yes. Oh, who did the manifest? Did you look at the manifest? I did. Huh? What? Did you, you look at the manifest? I did. Yes. Is there a Friday? So we're, we're getting paid this Friday. Yay! Oh my gosh, I still haven't found my check from last time. What? You lost it? I lost oh. my first check. Oh. I will. I figured I'd wait till the second payment so that she could still be together. Oh, I, I switched to direct deposits. So I, I, I did as well. I so. just, I, I was at my family at a party and I didn't want a check sitting out. So I put it in a safe place. Yep. And it's possible that that was the recycling center pile? Or it's possible? You're like, uh, what's his name? Manny Marineris. I don't when, know. When uh, he got stopped, they looked in the book compartment and he had multiple checks for the Red Sox six figures <gasps> plus that he not cash. What? Yep, yep. That is interesting. Here, I'll let you just get oh, no. oh, you missed one. Oh, yeah. Do we need to sign this one? All Second one? Other spots. There's no sign here. Oh, where did it come from? Yes, you have to sign all three spots. But it doesn't have a sign here, so. Well, there's four. Oh, I'm sorry. Joanne didn't put sign here's on all of them? You know what? There are three spots. Are we not supposed to be the ones that don't have a sign here? Sign all of them. Okay, I'm just going to sign it. I them. don't know what Joanne was thinking. Well, it's very possible we don't have to sign them all, and we're just being over signing, but. No. I don't want it to over signing. Okay. They're only in there to sign. You have to sign that. Okay, and then you have to sign all of them. And Denise, you got all my emails. Right? I just did the other ones. Just the, that oh, there additional is. thing that I forgot to ask you to oh, do. Yes. How come Bugby didn't sign? 
Because I haven't got that one yet. Because I haven't given it to you. These are out of order, Denise. Do I? Is there a way to fix that for me? Does it matter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just that. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> we had them in order, and then you have oh, the no, science, okay. no, and now they're okay. in different piles. That's okay. So we'll just get them all signed. Oh, look, there's numbered. I can put them back in numbered order. Oh, That's okay. Oh. It really doesn't matter. All right, all right. All right. <sighs> You don't want to be that person in that dog. Yeah. Okay, try it again. Thank you. You're welcome. This, this is for you. This is for you. This is for you. And this one? This one. I don't need to sign this letter because it's nope. going to redo it. You got it. No, but I'm going to ask you to come in tomorrow. Um, so you know, are you? To sign it, okay. Okay, yeah. Cool. That's, uh, I don't need, don't need that one anymore. So there's that one. Who left? Huh? Is that the lady, police officer? Yep. Yeah. 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 I feel out of touch with it. I appreciate knowing so much more about what's going on because yep. of it. And that I know it's a positive thing yeah, to do this. But then of course everyone knows you're the one checking the manifest and you find something it's on you. That's fun. <laughs> that's fun. It adds to my popularity that's growing every day. Well, it's good for you to do it so you learn about I, it. I do. I Plus, I then do. you can catch all Denise's mistakes. These are back so. in order, Denise. I don't know if that matters, but. Just kidding, Denise. I know. Denise doesn't make mistakes. I don't know what you're talking about. She does, but we just don't find them. That's, she's that she's good. Pretty, she's pretty seasoned. I have mistakes an announcement congrats. to make. Yes. Meeting oh. adjourned. Hey, will you? Oh, no. 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 We yes. 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 Just another reminder, and we need to talk about the next meeting date, which is October 4th, which yes. is during the week that I'm gone on vacation. Unfortunately, it looks like it is going to happen. Not unfortunately. I should be happy to go on a vacation, yes. but um, it's a little stressful. Um, so, Monday, October 4th, y'all going to be okay by yourselves? <laughs> no. Wait, wait, who's going to answer the phone? Could Andy be here by now? No, he's gone then too, right? Andy's gone then too? No, if Andy's, Andy's only gone. gone for like Thursday and Friday. So it's possible he could come. He, I'm hoping he's he by then. starts before that. Yeah, yeah so it's possible. Who, 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 oh, Andy, yeah. So, how about this? Oh my God, we're talking about this. Oh, how ugly. I did bring it up here. <laughs> Andy stands for a pot, Never numeral possible person, yes. Stand in for a random <laughs> so thing. I think the term is cat out of the bag. <laughs> yes. So it just in terms of that week, are you thinking in terms of postponing the board meeting? I didn't know if you wanted to still have it or if you wanted to have what, it. What what is hot on the agenda? Do we have to have that meeting? We always have stuff on the agenda, but yeah. Yeah, it's two weeks from now, so there's not much on there except a couple little consent agenda items. Um, Could we do any of those items during the um, ABC meetings we have to go to? Could. It's up to you or the ABC. It's their meeting. That sounds great well, to me. It's really a board meeting. So well, we meet on the 29th. My, my 20th anniversary is on the 6th. I'm happy to not have something to do there. Sorry. So how about those little things you've got? Let's do those on the 29th when we meet for the ABC meeting. Yeah. And let's cancel the meeting on the 4th. Look at that. Well, Happy well, anniversary. The, the next ABC meeting is the 28th. Uh, 28th, sorry. Not the 29th. My apologies. I'm just going to write this down. ABC, we're going to do... Board Whatever board. that little things that you said that were Did hanging. you hear you have a Monday out? Hmm? Did you hear you have a Monday out? That's right, we did. Look at that. No, the board's now. That's exciting. No, wait a minute. We're just deciding we don't no, have to... No, the 28th is a Monday, isn't it? No, I'm saying we have... It's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. The 4th will Tuesdays. be out. Because yeah, we're okay. not going to have a meeting on the 4th. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then we meet again on the 12th. 12th. Which is the ABC meeting, I believe. Uh, what? 
Yeah. So just for exactly. this, we're canceling the meeting on the 4th, and those little things are on the 28th. And the next board meeting isn't until... Well, what, what, what's on the 4th? Eight, eight. Did you no. just say the 4th? Okay. We're, we're canceling the 4th. We're canceling the regular scheduled board meeting. Canceling the 4th. Canceling the fourth. So and the next meeting we have is the 29th. 28th. 28th. That's an ABC meeting, is it not? Yep. Yeah. And Denise has a few little things, and we'll do those at the same so time. So this work goes in on the 28th. Yes. yes. Also. Okay. What time is the 20th one? Just so I have it. 6 p.m. 6, I think. I haven't entered these. I think they're all at 6 p.m. Yeah, I think so. And then the next board meeting, just board meeting, is November, I mean, October 18th. Yes. Great. And if we need to do something, the I think it's the 12th, we can do an ABC, we can do something if okay. something needs to be done. So that gives you that week off. So one, you don't have to prepare anything for the 4th. Yes, which helps. And then you can go on vacation and not even think about us. And just She's going to be right smiling the whole time. Lord, oh, all the places. You are going to be just fine. It's lots of air in Florida. <laughs> just stay outside. And don't near, go near the alligators, and you'll be good. Or, or the boa constrictors. Or near any public, very crowded places. Yes. Well, just pop them out. All right. Now we're the big moment. Now Mr. Brown can say his thing. Okay. I already said meeting adjourned. Oh, we'll yeah, just read it. So we're meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. There you go.